Hello, my name is Lily Wong Kissel. I'm a pediatric epileptologist at the Mayo Clinic here in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm going to be talking about pediatric epilepsy syndrome. A syndrome diagnosis is, is supported by a collection of symptoms that characterize a medical condition. Epilepsy syndrome are classified by the age of seizure onset, seizure type or types, developmental history, brain imaging, and EEG findings. Accurate classification of specific epilepsy syndrome can be important for prognosis and treatment. Some epilepsy syndromes are well age limited, whereas others require lifelong therapy. Some epilepsy syndromes respond to particularly well to certain medications, but can be worsened by others. Pediatric epilepsy syndromes are classified into neonatal and infantile onset epilepsy, childhood onset epilepsy, and juvenile onset epilepsy. To start off, the well-described epilepsies that begin during the first weeks of life are benign neonatal and benign infantile epilepsies, Odorhara syndrome, and early myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. And these seizures are frequent initially in all of these syndromes, but seizures in benign neonatal and benign infantile epilepsies respond to medications and typically resolve by the second year of life. In these two syndromes, development is normal. In contrast, seizures are difficult to treat in Odorhara syndrome and in early myoclonic epilepsy of infancy and severe developmental delay is typical in these two. In infancy, seizures due to migrating focal epilepsy of infancy, West syndrome and Dravet syndrome can be difficult to treat and development in these children may be poor. Successful seizure treatment with adrenocorticotropic hormone or also known as ACTH or Vigabitrin may prevent further developmental regression seen in West syndrome. Effective anti-epileptic drugs for Dravet syndrome may include clobazam, valproic acid, and steropentol. Lamotrigine, carbamazepine, oxcarbazepine can worsen seizures and should be avoided. Among the childhood onset epilepsies, childhood absence epilepsy and benign epilepsy with central temporal discharges are the most common. In childhood absence epilepsy, absence seizures appear as few seconds of staring, eye blinking, automatic movement, chewing, hand rubbing. Absence seizures are frequent up to dozens of times per day when not treated. The EEG shows three hertz spike and wave discharges. Development is normal in these children. Effective first-line anti-epileptic drugs are athosuximide, lamotrigine, and valproic acid. With benign epilepsy with central temporal discharges, this is one of the most common focal epilepsies of childhood. If witnessed at onset, the child may be aware, has contraction on one side of the face, numbness or tingling around the mouth, with uh, problems uh, with motor speech function. Generalized tonic-clonic seizures can happen in these children and they may follow from focal seizures due to electrographic spread. In these children, the MRI is normal, the EEG shows epileptiform abnormalities from the central and temporal head regions. Seizures may be rare in these children and may not all require treatment. In patients with frequent seizures, anti-epileptic drug treatment may be warranted. Lastly, myoclonic atonic epilepsy is also known as DUSA syndrome. Children have normal development prior to seizure onset. These children have multiple seizure types and they can have generalized tonic-clonic seizures frequently. Ketogenic diet has been shown to be effective in myotonic static epilepsy. Lenisca Stowe syndrome is another seizure type. These patients have multiple seizures, including generalized tonic seizure, tonic clonic seizure, absent seizures, drop seizures. 
These uh, drop seizures may look like generalized stiffening or also known as tonic seizure, simple drops or etonic seizures, quick body jerks or myoclonic seizures, and at other times they can have focal seizures. In lennox gastaut syndrome, there is typically existing developmental delay prior to seizure onset. Seizures are difficult to treat in these children, and most children have severe developmental delay. Multiple medication used in combination is typical. Surgical corpus callosotomy for drop seizures may be an option in these selected patients. So, the goal of epilepsy treatment is typically to eliminate or reduce seizure and not to correct the abnormal EEG findings. The treatment strategy, however, is different for another epilepsy syndrome called Lena Kleffner syndrome and continuous spike wave and slow wave sleep. In these two syndromes, the epileptiform abnormality seen during sleep EEG is markedly increased compared to the awake EEG. During an overnight EEG study, um, we can see abnormalities and the overnight EEG is required for accurate diagnosis. For, the, for this particular syndrome, high dose diazepam, steroid, or acetazolamide can improve EEG findings and daytime learning and behavior. Some medications, including carbamazepine and oxcarbazepine, can worsen the sleep EEG. Absence seizures or myoclonic seizures that start in the teenage years can be juvenile absence epilepsy or juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Generalized tonic-clonic seizures can occur in either one of these epilepsy syndromes. Treatment with seizure medication can be effective, but typically requiring lifelong therapy. So in a detailed uh, history of seizure type is required for a diagnosis of specific pediatric epilepsy syndrome. EEG and MRI are additional tests that we use that clarify the diagnosis. Continuous video EEG monitoring can be helpful when sleep state is required or to record typical seizures to clarify the patient's specific seizure types. Some pediatric epilepsy syndromes can be well controlled with medication, but some of them can also spontaneously remit in adolescents. Others would require uh, lifelong therapy, so it is important to have a careful selection of your anti-epileptic drugs to minimize seizure frequency and to improve quality of life. Thank you for the opportunity to present this information on pediatric epilepsy syndromes.